What's up, y'all? I am back with a third video of today. So, we're going to react to Let's Draw an Earth Dragon Fantasy Art Friday. And it is by, um, and it is by, um, uh, Lethal Chris Drawing. Um, uh, make sure you guys go subscribe to his channel. He does amazing work and he's an amazing colorist. So, I wish you know, a video and my Instagram will be down below. Also, if you're new and you just tuning into my channel, make sure you subscribe, comment, and share my videos and give a thumbs up. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. So, let's get to the video in 3, 2, 1. Hi everyone, and welcome to this Fantasy Art Friday video. In this video, I'm going to be working on a drawing of an Earth Dragon. I've recently been working on lots of drawings of dragons, like the Ice Dragon and the Fire Dragon, and I've really been looking forward to working on this one. Uh, especially after seeing a few of you have been requesting more dragon drawings, uh, like the Earth Dragon. I've seen even requests for like Lightning Dragon and other awesome ideas that I'd really like to try soon. And my idea for this Earth Dragon was to give it a wood texture with uh, moss and branches and those sort of things to make it blend in with the environment around it. After working on the initial sketch I then started adding the pen outlines using my Pigma Micron 05 and I really love using this pen for these types of drawings where um, you can change the line weight just by changing the angle of the pen tip um, so adding the thicker lines to the underside of some parts of the dragon and then focusing the finer lines along the top I like edges using, where uh, I was going to add the highlights later on. But in some of the areas uh, where I wanted to add some extremely fine lines, so I like using the one better that, on the so micro I was using pens. my Copic Multiliner SP 0.03mm. Um, I wanted to kind of it's experiment this to see better. if I added extremely fine lines to the leaves around the back of the dragon's head in contrast to the really thick lines of the branches overlaying that area. Um, I usually kind of blend between the line thicknesses, but in this case I've kind of drastically changed between thick and thin lines uh, f for this area. Just to see if it kind of changes the way the different materials look. Um, like having really thick lines for the branches and then having really fine lines for the leaves <coughs> underneath them. Uh, I just wanted to see how this would look and hopefully it works out. After working on the outlines it was time to work on the colouring and for the colouring of this drawing I used Copic markers starting off by working on the dragon's face and trying to add a wood texture to this area. I started off with a milky white marker adding base layers of colouring adding more colour to the right side of each segment of the face uh, that's where I was going to add more shading later on. Uh, just adding streaks of colour with this marker first and then over the top of that to add the next layers of colouring I used a mixture of a champagne marker and a maroon marker. Just mm. building up champagne the layers of colouring and trying to create a wood texture. To add some extra dark shading to the dragon's face uh, inside its nostril and above its eye I was using a dark marker. I like the way he marker. brings the colours together. And then to add some green tones to some of the wood segments I've, I found that a pea green marker blends extremely well over the top of this colouring. For the colouring of the dragon's eye, I added a base layer of colour with a pale heath marker, then added the colouring to the pupil with the cerise, and added some extra shading to the area with a cool grey 5. Across this drawing, I was using my white Prismacolor pencil to add highlights, especially in areas that I wanted to define the shape amongst some of the dark shading that I'd added. Uh, so on the face, it was really helpful uh, in defining some of those segments of wood. Um, and I tried to use the Prismacolor pencil to really show up some of the areas where I wanted to show up more of the details that I'd added. Moving on from that, for the colouring of the branches on top of the dragon's head, I added a base layer of colour with a champagne marker, and then added shading with a maroon and dark bark markers. Um, I, I decided to add some patches of moss, I thought that would really fit the theme of the earth dragon. So I added some moss with a moss green, and added shading to that area with a third degree marker. I also added some flowers on those branches, and to colour them in, I added a base layer of pale heath and then used a pure pink to add some bright colouring towards the centre of each one. For the colouring of the leaves on the back of the dragon's head, I added a base layer of colour with a moss green, and then added some brighter colouring around the outside with a new leaf marker. And then after that, to add some individual shading to some of the leaves, I used the verdigris marker again. Uh, just trying to add a little bit of shading to define some of the shapes within that area. I also used this marker again to add the shading over the top of the leaves to show the shadows that are cast from the branches over the top of them. With this part of the dragon completed, I then moved on to working on the colouring of its neck, uh, starting off with the wooden plates on the front. Um, adding a base layer of colour with a milky white and then added more streaks of colouring over the top of that with the champagne marker and a cool grey number three 
and also used the moss green to add some streaks of green across that area as well. I tried to keep this wood texture a bit more faded and just tried to change up from the same wood texture that I added to the face. Um, and I, I used the cool grey markers to add a, a cooler tone to this area to uh, make, sh make sure the, f the focus is mainly on the dragon's face for this drawing. For the colouring on the back of the dragon's neck, I started with a base layer of colour with the verdigris marker and then added shading to this area with cool grey 3, 5 and 7, trying to create a layered effect moving downwards along the neck. Um, after that, I continued to add lots of shading to this area, trying to make it seem uh, much more faded and cool and dark in comparison to the bright colours of the dragon's face. And then I filled in the vines with the same wood texture colouring that I used for the face, um, blending over the top of the shading that I'd added. Uh, after that, I then added uh, darker tones with a black Copic marker and blended that in with the cool grey markers. Um, just to add some more depth to this area because it seemed a bit too flat initially so using the black marker was a great way to bring in some more depth to that area. Um, after that I used a white Prismacolor pencil to bring in some more highlights around that area. For the final stage of this drawing I added the background, adding a sky with a pale heath marker making sure to leave a layer of clouds and then over the top of this I added some trees with a pale grape marker um, and I tried to keep it nice and faded into the background and left the darker colouring to the dragon. Then finally I used my Uniball Signo Broad white ink pen to add some highlights to this drawing. Adding highlights to the dragon's eye and then adding highlights going all the way around it. Um, and also to add some particle effects in the background along with using a pure pink marker for this as well. After that this drawing was completed. Overall, this drawing took about three hours to complete in total, and I really loved working on it. Working on these dragon drawings and these fantasy art drawings, they're always so much fun, and I'm always looking forward to working on these ones. Uh, if you have any suggestions for future fan art or fantasy art, any suggestions are hugely appreciated. If you want to see more videos like this, then make sure you're subscribed, and any likes or shares really mean a lot to me. If you want to follow my progress photos and keep up to date with everything I'm working on, then be sure to check out the links in the description box below to check out my Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. And once again, thank you so much for the support on this channel, and thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you're having an amazing day, and I'll and see you soon. And time. Well, it is one thing I love in life is... Watching artists like this put together a masterpiece and bringing, bringing colors together and just something that can inspire you to just create one picture at a time. I think this piece is probably one of my favorite ones he's done. Yeah, I like the dude's work. He's very creative. I love the colors he puts together. Something that I respect people the most is their creativity and their hustle and what they do. So yeah, if you guys enjoy my reaction to this, let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel also, and, and don't forget to, su to subscribe to his channel also. This is DHR2 Productions, and uh, I'm out of here.